In the pantheon of fruit desserts, crisps and cobblers get all the love. But I'm here to tell you that buckles deserve their day in the sun, and that's what we're making today. Now, a buckle is kind of like a cross between a coffee cake and a crumble. And it's the fruit and the streusel topping, which is what makes a buckle a buckle. And we want a streusel topping that's pretty substantial, not just lots of little crumbs. So we're starting off with one cup of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add a half a cup of packed light brown sugar. We've got a half a teaspoon of table salt. Let me give this a quick mix just to break up any big mounds of brown sugar in there. So now I'm going to add six tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've melted. This has cooled just a little bit. And I'll just stir this until it comes together. And what I'm looking for is no more dry patches in the bowl. All right, so when it starts looking like it's becoming a little bit cohesive and it's sticking to itself, that looks great. We want to chill this. I'm going to go put this in the refrigerator and it needs to stay in there for at least 10 minutes, but you can do this well in advance of making the rest of the buckle. All right, got to get to the fruit. Now we're using a lot of berries in our mixed berry buckle. We're going for the whole trifecta here. We've got blackberries, raspberries, blueberries. Now in total, this is 15 ounces or five ounces of each of these berries. Now we want to make sure that the berries release their sweetness and their juices later on when we add it to the batter. For these larger berries, like the blackberries and the raspberries, I'm going to cut them in half crosswise. Thankfully, the blueberries don't need any help. They don't need to be cut. So I'm just going to finish cutting these blackberries and raspberries, and then we can move on. All right, it's time to make the cake batter. Now, this is a really thick batter because we want it to support not only the berries, but also the streusel topping. So we don't want to incorporate a lot of air. So I've got here a cup of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add a quarter cup of granulated sugar, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. We want a little bit of lift here. A teaspoon of grated lemon zest, always goes great with berries. Half a teaspoon of table salt, and I'll whisk this together. So now let's move on to our wet ingredients here. I have two large eggs. I'm going to add a half a cup of whole milk. And I'm adding four tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've melted. And a little vanilla, a teaspoon. There we go. I'll whisk this together until the eggs are all mixed in. Time to incorporate the wet into the dry ingredients here. Just pour this in. Just gonna stir it until it comes together. And you can see it gets very thick very quickly. So now, let's get back to those berries. Again, it's 15 ounces total. That's a lot of berries, almost a pound. Now I cut them, but the last thing that I want to do is add a quarter cup of granulated sugar directly to the berries. And you want to do this at the last minute because the sugar is going to start to pull out some of that liquid from the berries. If you do it too far in advance, you'll get a very smurfy purple buckle, and nobody wants that. So I'm just going to gently toss this. Now we need to get our pan prepared, and I'm using a 9-inch light-colored cake pan. Now we need to make sure that the buckle releases very easily. So I'm going to do a multi-step prep, just spraying it with a little bit of non-stick cooking spray. You can use butter, absolutely. A round of parchment goes in the bottom. Grease the parchment. And then we're going to dust with some flour. So I'm just tilting the pan, making sure that I get all the edges. So now we want to take these berries, and I'm going to add half of them into our batter mixture and gently stir them in. I'm just looking to make sure that they are evenly distributed through the batter. The batter goes into the pan. I'm going to use my spatula just to push it out to the edges. It's also a good time to make sure that the fruit is evenly distributed. Now I'm going to top the buckle with the remaining half of the berries, making sure that every area has a little bit of berry. We're going to top this with streusel. So I'm going to break this into smaller pieces, but not too small. I don't want lots of crumble, just want a mix of bigger pieces and smaller pieces. And I'd say that looks great. So now we have to bake it, and we're going to bake it in a 350 degree oven until a toothpick inserted right in the center comes out clean. That's going to take about 50 minutes. Now I'll go in halfway through and rotate the pan. Oh. It gets better looking every time I open that oven. 
Now, it's been 50 minutes, so I'm going to check to see if it's done. Insert a toothpick in the center. Now, I might hit a berry, so you might get a little purple, but no, that looks gorgeous. The toothpick is clean. So this needs to cool completely for at least two hours right on this rack. The buckle is cool, but before we turn it out, I want to make some whipped cream to go on the side of this beautiful dessert. So two cups of heavy cream, really well chilled. I've got three tablespoons of granulated sugar. That's our sweet. And now here's our special ingredient. This is malted milk powder, the stuff that you used to make beverages out of. This stuff is so good in ice cream, cookies, and whipped cream. It's just malted barley, some wheat, salt, baking soda, and of course, dried milk powder. And this is a half cup of malted milk powder. And I'll just let this go on low speed for about a minute. So now that the malted milk powder is incorporated into the cream, I'm going to increase the speed of my mixer to high and let it go for about one to three minutes. I'm looking for stiff peaks at this point. There we go. I think that's gonna be it. Let's check this out. There you go. The whipped cream is standing proud. That is stiff peaks and this is ready to serve. It's time to turn out our buckle, but before I do that, I'm gonna make sure again that it releases from the pan. So I'm just gonna take a paring knife and go around the edges, because you only get one chance of this. Now I'm going to invert it out onto a plate. Oh, you can smell the berries in there. Let's get rid of that parchment and then I'm going to re-invert it onto another plate, or I'm going to use this pretty little pedestal. Isn't she sweet? That is gorgeous. This is almost too pretty to eat. Almost. I'm definitely going to tuck into it. All right. I think I deserve a nice big piece. Look how pretty. Oh, and I can't forget the whipped cream. Just a little bit, right? No, I'm gonna go for more. Ugh, okay. Proof is in the pudding here. That is stunning. That is perfection. And the cake itself is so tender. I love the streusel on top. The malted milk powder just gives almost a toasted aroma and flavor to the whipped cream. It just kicks it up to a whole other level. This is one of my favorite desserts, and you saw how easy it was. So if you want to make this beautifully bejeweled buckle, cut berries in half and then toss with sugar right before using. Top the thick batter with more berries and break chilled streusel all over the top. You could serve it with ice cream, but why not try our malted milk whipped cream? So from Cook's Country, Simple, sweet, and sophisticated mixed berry buckle. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>